Oh no, thank you so much. What's going on, New York? <laughs> Giving a big shout out, much love, thank you. So Brian is a lifelong New Yorker, and he stayed true to his roots. He lives in Staten Island, and in addition oh, wow. to his film work, acts in theatrical and musical productions throughout the tri-state area. He's that. appeared in productions including Godspell, The Crucible, The Glass Menagerie, and most recently in the off-Broadway production, You've Got Hate Mail, this past May. Mm -hmm. Brian has also acted and starred in numerous films, including yeah. Vulgar and Drop Dead Roses. But he began his film career in Kevin Smith's first feature, the movie we're all here to see tonight. So we're honored to have you here tonight, and we asked our Twitter followers and Facebook followers if they had any questions for you. So let's jump right in, okay? Sounds good. All By right. the way, I want to thank the 6,229 votes that we received. Or what it really came down to, the 10 guys who sat at their computer hit it 600 times. Big ups to that. All right, Laura from Facebook asks, how did working on an independent film like Clerks compare to the larger productions you did later? Well, thank you, Laura, from Twitter. Um, I guess working on, first of all, Clerks was my first film ever that I ever worked on, and working on it was a, a huge first for myself, as well as Kevin and everybody else involved. So uh, it was definitely a difference once we shot the film, which was a late night type of thing from 10.30 at night till 6 in the morning down at the actual store in Leonardo, New Jersey, which still exists today. And um, and then having a real job, you know, nine to five up in New Brunswick, New Jersey at the time I was living. And uh, doing that for 23 days was a bit kind of hellish. Uh, and then once that got, the film got picked up at Sundance in 94 and then got distribution and out in October and Kevin wanted to do Mallrats, his second film, just a gigantic difference because here it was Universal Studios and, and working with like people have their own job like I'm the wardrobe person, I'm your makeup person, you know, I'm the guy who gives you a soda. It was just very weird. I'm I'm come from a very blue collar family and Oh, why thank you. <laughs> you know but um, it was a huge difference and even to this day though I love still working with independent film because it's more of a, a close knit everybody doing the best they can for the job where it's not huge departments, it's you know, you're all together and you try to you know problem solve together. Okay. So Michael from Twitter asked, You got to work with a bunch of hilarious people on clerks. Any funny memories or stories to share with us? I don't know. First of all, I don't know if any of those guys are funny. <laughs> no. um, you know, it was it was definitely a blast working with Kevin's script. I mean, here it was when we when I first read the script, and you know, you're reading these lines, and it really it really called to anybody who's worked a crappy job or have been to a store that gave him crappy service. You've all been there, right? <laughs> You know, and so the iconic line of, I'm not even supposed to be here today. Yeah. At least somebody at some point has said that to themselves at their job. No matter what. I, I, I bet you even the President of the United States has said that at one time. Uh -huh. Damn it. Damn. I can't. Uh, I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> Just imagine it happening. Um, but, you know, it was great working with Jay Muse, but at the time, he was young, he was only 17. You'll see, wow. like, so, so young, and, and so, so high on life, <laughs> <laughs> that it helped him get through the scenes. And, and working that way was just kind of funny, where everybody who wasn't involved with him had to be off to the side, like he couldn't look at people around him unless they were in the scene, so. That was funny. Uh, playing hockey on the roof, very funny. You know, things like that you would normally never see happen. I mean, when you first read the script, I, n I didn't think anybody would ever see the film because it was so pushing the envelope at the time. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Anik asked, did you expect Clerks to become so popular? When did you know it was going to be a huge hit? No, I, I didn't expect it to be so popular as it got. Like I said, I thought it would be something that we, who was a part of the film, would have on VHS tape. Uh, children, VHS tape were these large <laughs> things that you stuck in a machine that played movies, and it didn't come over our phone. Uh, yeah. And so we would just share it amongst each other as to, you know, look what we did one summer. This is kind of funny. Um, when I thought it was, that's when I, when I thought it would, got huge was 
it got selected to the 94 Sundance Film Festival, and then apparently tickets for the screening sold out before the festival started, which was a first, apparently, for their festival. Um, and then I'm hearing from people who are working with Kevin, like, oh, um, you know, Kennedy from MTV wants to do an interview with you guys. I was like, Kennedy? Big, goofy glasses, Kennedy, long hair? The nerd is nerdalicious girl? Absolutely. That sounds like this is getting weird. Yeah. Wow. Difficult movie to watch. It was a movie I, uh, that was called Vulgar. Oh, God. A very, very, that. very dark comedy. <laughs> it's a film that you don't sit down with like someone you freshly are dating going, hey, you want to check out a movie? Put in this movie Vulgar. It's <laughs> awesome. Film, actually, that when Howard Stern saw it, he said he had to stop halfway through because it was disturbing him too much. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a huge ringing endorsement for us at that point. Okay. okay, Patrick asked, how do you feel you've grown as an actor since Clerks? Thank you, Patrick. Uh, besides the waistline, um, oh. as an actor, I, I think I've grown, there are times I'll watch this film from time to time and be like, man, I, I could have made better choices as an actor. You know, as you get older, you have more life experiences and stuff like that, and you just would portray things a little bit better than you normally did. Um, you know, I, 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 it, it's up for the audience to decide how I've grown as an actor. If they've enjoyed my recent work then, and they keep on coming and saying they love what I do, that's, that's awesome. And I think I'm doing it well. And I've been very fortunate enough to work with some really great directors over my, my career so far. I mean, I've, I've got to work with M. Night Shyamalan in The Happening. Uh, I did a cameo in James L. Brooks' uh, How Do You Know and things like that. So I, I've been very fortunate to work with great directors who can guide me in a great way. Okay, this next question is a little bit in serious. Phil asked on Facebook, the Corda Bodega is still going strong, but how do you feel about the decline of the local video store? Do you feel that the rise of streaming movie rentals has made clerks dated? Thank you, Phil, for that serious question about the distribution streamline that is our local filmmaker's nightmare. Um, you know, there are still those mom and pop type of video stores that will bring in these films that these big box stores and these, you know, Netflix and other bigger streaming companies don't take on board. Um, and to be honest with you, you can't go, hey Netflix, what do you recommend? It's just, they just go by your previous selections as opposed to the guy who's sitting at the video store who actually has been watching these movies like Kevin did, like Quentin Tarantino did as a young man and who could recommend you really great independent films especially and films that are very obscure that um, it's sad to see it go. Um, it's just like for people who are music fans and they really can't get over a compressed audio because it just doesn't give you the the, the great of you know sound realm that is you know having the DVD direct or having it all. So it's sad to see them go, but I don't think they're going to be gone for good. It's like saying, well, will you ever see the end of seeing films in theaters? Well, never. Teenagers will still need a place to go to mess around without their parents are. You know what I mean? You know, certain comedy celebs still need places to go and have self-pleasuring, you know, moments. So theaters will always be around. All right. Ben from Twitter asks, do you or did you identify with Dante? Did you ever have a really crappy job you couldn't wait to get out of? I still have a crappy job. I can't wait to I'm here, and I no, I'm kidding. Um, I once worked for the Shoprite Corporation for four years. I was a seafood monger. I was a, a grocery manager. I worked at a fast food chicken place called Chicken Holiday for a couple of years. And yeah, you've seen all the knuckleheads, like that whole like this coffee is too hot scene. Uh -huh. I've actually had that with people with chicken. Like you know, this chicken's too hot. <laughs> it it will get cooler, sir. Uh -huh. Let it sit a while. Trust me. Ambient room temperature will eventually set into the meat and you'll be fine. Okay. Um, Kathy from Twitter asks, as someone who's lived in New York City and New Jersey, which place is your favorite? Oh, that's like asking a mother her favorite child. Um, you know how they're like, oh, well, one is so very talented and the other one, well, they clean up their room. Um, I, I was born and raised in the Bronx until I was 10. Boogie down Bronx, with my hips! That's right. I actually lived on the same block and 
went to the same Catholic school as Jennifer Lopez. Oh. Soundview, Soundview in the, his house? All right, anyway. So then my father, who worked in Jersey, in Inglewood Cliffs, New Jersey, uh, for the French car company Renault, uh, said, we gotta go. The, I, I am no longer taking the Cross Bronx Expressway again. And obviously, it's still a nightmare to this day, many decades later. So we moved to Jersey, we moved to Palisade Park, New Jersey, which is Northern Jersey. Uh, we lived there for four years. And then after that, we moved, after my father retired, we moved down to Central Jersey in Old Bridge, New Jersey. Yeah, Old Bridge, <laughs> right on. Route 9, full effect. Um, and it was, uh, you know, it, that's a great place. Although when I lived in New York, even when I lived in Palisade Park, New Jersey, I always walked to school. And then when we went to Old Bridge, I'm like, well, the bus to school is over here. I'm like, bus? Where the hell are we living, ma? It's like sticks down here. So I, I like them both. Jersey, you got to love the shore. New York, you just got to love the energy. I mean, New York City, hands down, the center of the universe. Plain and simple. Central Park's right in the middle of the universe. Exactly. Central Park is like the gate to Gozer. <laughs> if you That's get how we like to think here. of it. Exactly. You could actually see that building from here, which is so cool. We won't tell anyone where it is, though. No, 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 no. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I love them both. They, they both have, you know, I love the energy of New York every single time I'm here. Even my girlfriend says it's like, you get like amped when you're in the city. I'm like, you gotta be amped in this city. You never know what's gonna happen. You gotta be on point. All right, I gotta go get a pretzel. What's up, pretzel man? Okay. And you're in Staten Island now, right? Why don't you give them my address while you're at it? I, I thought we could get some stalkers to follow you home. They will. Yes, I'm in Staten Island. Um, over on Bay Street. Yeah, that's where I live, Bay Street. I like it. I like Staten Island. Uh, hands down, best Italian food. Sorry, Mulberry Street, but Staten Island, it seems like Brooklyn has moved to Staten Island and, and just, it's very nice there. It's very nice people from Staten Island. You people are very good. Nothing wrong with Staten Island. Please don't hurt me. All right. So, Sarah on Facebook wants to know, how often do people use the line, I wasn't even supposed to be here today, on you, and how annoying is it? I, I do get asked, it is the, if we did the family feud, it would be the number one answer on the board, would be, uh, are you even supposed to be here today? It's a great line, don't, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of great lines like Kevin Rice, and you know, it's a line that's said to me, and I don't get upset. Why would I? It's a line that's made me... Kevin and Muse, I think, are going to be down at his store in Red Bank tomorrow. Between, yeah, the secret stash between 2 and 5. So if you want to take a trip down to the shore and catch him, that's where they'll be. Uh, we have some people from the cast here. We have uh, Scott Schiaffo, who you'll see up on screen here. He's the Chulies gun guy. He's wandering around here somewhere. Give a shout there, Scott. Where are you? There he is, all the way in the back. What's that? Oh, the park police are arresting him. Where'd it go? It's all good, Scott. Yeah. It's awesome. Okay. Sean wants to know, you're primarily yeah. a theater actor. How is the experience comparatively to working with Kevin Smith films, and how much improvisation was involved in the Did you run the session for Kevin Smith? Yeah. yeah. Um, my first love is always theater. That's where I started. I was doing theater three or four years before I even met Kevin. Yeah. So, in a way, that helped me big time. I'm a film student, so I'm a huge fan. His dialogue is just so verbose. I was working with the show. I was working with the show. So, there's just so much to say in one mouthful, so to speak. And being that he was, his first film it was Nine Eleven. 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 And if you watch it, it literally is seven minutes of dialogue with no cuts. And we did that first night, and thank God I had a you know, stage career to memorize, because you know, when you're on stage, you can't go, oh, stop, cut, let me do that again. Um, so it was great help for doing that. I also love this. I love a live audience. I love that feedback. And you know, when, when you're doing live theater, and you can do better the next night, or you, some nights you can goof with your other cast members and play little inside games that no one in the audience would ever know. So, my pocketbook likes films, but the actor in me loves, loves theater. No, I need an email. It really just So, last more. question. Can you tell us exactly why you're here tonight and what's going on with the Andrew show? Oh, um, yeah, the cameras. You're wondering about the cameras. The cameras are here for uh, keeping up the Kardashians. Thanks a lot. 
Apparently one of them has an eye on me. No. Um, it's uh, it's Kevin Show, comic book men. That's right. They're here. There's a little there's a little clerk story that may work into the script sometime in this upcoming season, which starts in October. And you might find your all y'all selves on camera at some point. So you're gonna have to watch this episode at some point. So if you have probationary issues or you're on the run, you better leave now because the camera's coming around. Well, all right. Well, then I want to thank Rebecca and everybody here at Central Park and Service for having me here. And thanks to the fans, because right now, who, do you really think Eddie Murphy would be here thanking you and taking your questions? Highly unlikely. We love you! Thank you. To think I actually beat out Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, and James Earl frickin' Jones? Holy crap. Thank you for the love for New Jersey movies. Thank you to Central Park. I can now say I've played Woodstock. Now I've played Central Park. This is the best. To all my friends who came out in support and to all the voters. And thanks for making this kind of family friendly. Kind of. For those who haven't seen the movie. Are there anyone out there who hasn't seen the movie? Speak up. Really? That many? Wow. You're in for a huge surprise. First of all, you'd be like, fix the color. There's something wrong with the projector. Uh, and then next, you'd be like, did I just read on the captioning what I thought I just read? <laughs> yep, we said that. So good luck. Enjoy the next screening of Clerks. Right, thank you so much, Brian Halloran. Enjoy the show, guys. <laughs>